We've got this car completely clayed. You can see the residue over. Adam ran around and clayed every square inch of this thing, including the glass. So we're ready to start polishing. But one quick tip that'll help you save some time in the end is applying our vinyl rubber and tire dressing to all your exterior plastics. Our team member, Chris, is actually going to dress all this for me. What this does is it kind of serves as a barrier. So if you're polishing along and you accidentally hit something like the door trim or a little bit of that textured plastic by the mirror, that polish residue isn't going to stick. You'll be able to take a towel and pretty much just wipe it off without having to sit there and fight with it like you do so many other times. This is just a quick time saver, something that we kind of consider a little inside tip to help you save time. All right, so now we're ready for polishing. Now, we do offer a full and complete line of hand polishing products. The first thing to understand is, though, that by hand, you're not going to remove swirl marks, and you're not going to get perfect paint. We're going for perfect, so hand polishing isn't really a realistic option here. You can add a nice amount of gloss and improve the look of your car by hand, but you're not going to get near the level of perfection that you get with a machine. For our machine system today, I'm going to be starting with the Porter Cable 7424 XP and our three-stage polishing system. Like every other of our previous generation of pads, the fourth gen, which I'm very proud I get to be the first one to show them on camera, is designed with the end user in mind. Ease of use and taking all the guesswork out of the system for you. The pads color coordinate to the chemicals that they go with, and we even build in features like this beveled ring in the back that allows you to center the pad on the backing plate without having to pull and recenter and pull and recenter. It kind of falls right into place for you. The first step in our process is our severe swirl remover. Now, if you're not sure how bad your car is or you've never machine polished your car before, I recommend you start out maybe one step down with our orange pad and polish combo swirl and haze remover. Test it, see how far it gets you. If you get perfect, there's your answer. I'm going to start with about that much polish for the area I have here on the hood. I'm also going to add one shot of our detail spray to prime the pad. Always remember to put the cord over your shoulder, keeps it from rubbing against the paint while you're working. I start out by just kind of blotting the polish onto the area I'm going to start. And I start the machine all the way down at a speed setting of one. It's the lowest speed. At this point, I just want to spread the product over the area. Once I've got it evenly spread, I bump it up to a speed five. You can work at speed five or six with the Porter Cable. Five will take a little bit longer for the product to work out, or to be completely worked, um, but the vibration's a little bit less, so it's easier on your hands. I personally prefer five. You can try it at six, and if it doesn't bother you, hey, you'll get done with the job a lot faster that way. Pay close attention also to the rotation of this backing plate. You can see there's these cooling holes. This machine isn't driven to rotate at all. It's oscillating, kind of uh, just what you would mimic, mimicking what you would do by hand. It's just doing it a lot faster. To tell if you're putting down enough pressure, you want to see that backing plate just doing this. If it's doing this, you're not putting enough pressure down, and if it's completely stopped, you're probably pressing too hard, and you're wasting effort. Now you notice when I shut the machine off, and also when I started it, the pad was already in contact with the paint. You never want to start up here because you end up with a Frisbee, not a polishing pad. Also, notice that I kept moving even after the power switch was off. Instead of ending up with kind of a build-up glop of polish where I stopped at, it spread over an area. So I've worked the polish. It's what's called flashing. I've worked it until it kind of goes clear. And you notice my movement. It was a back, forth, this way, then that way, until it went to this kind of oily consistency we have here. This is a sign that the polish has been worked completely. So we're going to step down progressively to our medium polish and the orange pad. Always make sure to shake all your polishes before using them too, just to be on the safe side. Same process, about the same amount of product. Another shot of the detail spray. And also notice I haven't removed the residue from the previous product. Because I've worked it out, all that's really left is polish residue. There's no reason to have to remove this. If you want to, to inspect it, you can. But save yourself the effort. Just go right over the top. The process is going to look almost exactly the same, just with a different color polish and pad. 
down to speed one. And back up to speed five. And as our last step, the finest grade pad, our white pad, with our finest grade polish, the fine machine polish. And just like with the other steps, machine down to setting one. You can start to see why taping off these stripes becomes so important in the beginning allows me to get right up to that edge and not have to worry about hurting it if I get too close. Back up to speed five, and away we go. All right, so I'm done with my test patch. This is a very important thing to understand. I don't want to take those three steps, go all the way around the car doing it, come back, wipe off the residue, and figure out that wasn't enough to get me what I wanted, or it isn't giving me the results I wanted. So you pick your, pick your small area to start in. An area about this big is good. Once you've done the whole process, remove. I'm using one of our double soft towels. This is our Primo towel. We also have a single soft, which is about half the thickness, both super high quality microfiber, the best you can get. I just kind of like the double soft because they're thick. Your polish residue should come off very easy. If you find yourself fighting against the residues, having to put a lot of elbow grease in, you've probably used a little bit too much product. You may want to back it down just a little bit on your next panel. So far, I am seeing that we got a very big improvement but it's certainly not perfect. There are some deeper scratches here and there. So I may want to either do an additional pass with the Porter cable. Uh, some of these deeper scratches may need to be addressed with a little bit more intensive correction, our four inch focus pads or the flex polisher. Um, this may be good enough for you. If this, is, if this is the standard that you think is perfect, don't let anybody else tell you you're wrong. If it makes you happy, do the rest of the car and get out there and enjoy the car. I'm gonna probably attack this with a little bit more intensive correction. Um, also something to remember, your polishing pads are going to have polish in them from that first pass. You don't need to add the same amount every single time. Two to three, maybe four drops of polish for each new section of the car. The door, a fender, going forward is enough. You add that huge line of polish every single time, you're going to eventually cake the pads up a little bit too much, they're going to be less effective. 